Good morning. Welcome to this episode of Refill with Randy. If you haven't already done so, grab your favorite cup, fill it up, and let's start to stay right together. Midweek fun here with my favorite bat mug. Speaking of Batman, as much as many of you know that uh, I like him as far as a superhero character, um, I would never really want to be like him because he is someone that is consumed with and defined by his past. In particular, his parents' murder. He has spent his entire life and fortune uh, trying to find ways to enact, you know, vengeance upon those that are like those criminals that hurt his parents. He's never really been able to move on, and it's it's hurt him. He's lonely because of it. Well, that makes me think about who I want to talk about this morning. A little different scenario. Uh, in the book of John chapter 4, uh, we see Jesus uh, out and about with his disciples, and he takes a trip into Samaria. Now, if you don't know about, um, you know, the Jews and the Samaritans, basically it's it's the equivalent today of almost Republican and Democrat. I mean, there's just it seems like there's animosity and the second that you know you know which side you're on all of a sudden you think you know everything about the person you know it's just not a good situation and in those days uh, the Jews looked down on the Samaritans uh, men looked down on women um, these were just part of the the, the social uh, obstacles at the time if you will well he gets into Samaria. Uh, his disciples go ahead looking for some food. And he looks over and he sees this woman at a well. Now that may not seem like an odd thing, except for the fact that this was kind of the, um, the middle of the day. It was right when the sun was scorching hot. It was when you would want to be underneath a, a tarp or a tent and taking cover, getting shade. And the fact that typically the women would go together, you know, it also stood out that she was there by herself. And so Jesus, he walks over to this woman and he speaks to her. And this, this takes her by surprise because, again, not only is he a man, he's a Jewish man. You know, and she wonders, why is he speaking to me? And all he simply did was he asked her for some water. Well, when she tells him what she's thinking, he said, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me for living water. Of course, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. She didn't understand that at that point. Well, <clears throat> there's a reason why she was there by herself in the middle of the day. And she was just trying to, to get by without getting into it. But Jesus starts some probing questions. And finally, he says to her, why don't you go and get your husband? And that's when she confesses, I don't have a husband. She was trying to be a little coy about it because Jesus says, you're right. You've had five husbands. The one you're with now, he's not even your husband. You see, this woman has been shaped by her past. You know, she's looked for love in all the wrong places. She's been used up. And she's been cast out. You know, she doesn't want to be there when all the other women are there gossiping about her. It's as if she has that scarlet A on her chest. And so, she too is probably pretty lonely. 
And of course that just leads her to want to enter into yet another relationship because she thinks, well, the first five didn't satisfy, but maybe this one will. Well, Jesus, you know, he, he didn't ask her these questions. He didn't bring out this information to shame her. You know, he wasn't just trying to make her feel guilty, but he did want her to acknowledge, you know, what her past has been and how it shaped her present he also wanted to give her a better future. That's why he was offering her that living water, that Holy Spirit. You know, he revealed to her that he was the Messiah. You know, think about that. Of all the people that he's come across so far in his ministry journey, it's a Samaritan woman living with a guy, five times divorced, at a well in the middle of the day. And yet, Jesus, he shared that with her. She leaves her pitcher that she had come there with to get water. And she ran out. And all of a sudden, she went from being a shamed sinner that didn't want to be around anyone to going and telling everyone that she could about this man, Jesus. Could he be the Messiah? You know, he knew everything about me. And so then she brings the town together and they get to hear Jesus firsthand themselves and many of them come to the Lord. It's just an amazing thing to think about. She wouldn't have been able to do that had she stayed stuck in her past. But you know what? Jesus went there that day and he went there on purpose. You know, in scripture it says that he had to go through Samaria. Now that was not a, a geographical statement. It was more of a, this is what dad wants statement. He went there looking for that woman. And he changed her life and he changed her destiny. And God, he wants to do the same thing for us. You know what? You may be stuck in the past. You may be going to the well in the middle of the day trying to avoid people that know your business. You know, maybe you feel ashamed. Maybe you feel like nothing can change. Maybe you feel like you are just chained to who you always have been. And you feel like you're never going to be anything else. But friends, I've got good news. Jesus is a chain breaker. He will set you free. That's precisely why he came. You know, we don't even realize it half the time that we're chained to something. You know, we're like an elephant. Have you ever wondered why this, you know, ginormous elephant uh, could be held in one place by a little chain? It's because when they first got that chain, they were little. And they pulled on it and they tugged it and they tried to get out of it and they couldn't. And then as they grew they stopped trying. Now being fully grown, they could easily break out of that chain, but they don't have the right mindset to do it. Friends, Jesus has given us the tool to be able to break out of that chain and become a new creation. He says all we need to do, confess those sins. He wants to forgive us. Confess him as Lord. He wants to lead us. He wants to help us to, to walk in such a way that we don't keep falling back into those things again. You know, how many times have you said, I'm not going to do that anymore? And then there you were doing it again. You know, in the scriptures, in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, it talks about how, you know, the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor any wrongdoers. And Paul, he lists off a bunch of sins there. And I tend to not want to prioritize sin because uh, whenever we do that, you know, what's always the worst sin? It's the one that someone else is committing and not us. So whatever your signature sin is, throw it in the list. He says, don't you know that, you know, you do this, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. But... But there's good news. He says, but you were, you know, you were washed. You were cleansed. You know, you were transformed. 
You were made into something new. We don't have to identify as that old self any longer. And so today, it's a Wednesday, it's midweek. Maybe your week isn't going great. Maybe you've kind of slipped back into things. Maybe you've let your anger get out of control. Maybe you've gone back into a relationship that you know you shouldn't. Maybe, you know, you're sitting at work and you're, you're sharing gossip or you're just complaining, uh, whether it's about a coworker or your boss, whatever it is, pause right now and ask God to break that chain, set you free. Don't let who you've been in the past define who you're going to be in the future. Go by what God says is true.